Now, over the years, I have been acquiring spare parts. As uh, things break here in my little van, I uh, buy parts, put them aside. Uh, if there's anything that I think might be useful, I put them into a little bag and hold on to them. Uh, that little bag has grown and grown and grown. As you can see, I now have a very big bag of spare parts. Unfortunately, this is not the only bag. I have another one here, too. This is too much stuff. So today, the job is take care of this, whittle this down, try to get rid of some of this junk, because this is way too much for me to be carrying around every single day. So I'm sure you're thinking that this is a lot of parts to be carrying around, and why do I have so much? And what's in these bags? Well, I can give you a very definitive answer on why I am carrying around parts, and that is because over the years things break, and so when I replace stuff, I try to keep a backup of things that have broke a lot. And uh, getting on eight years now living out of this van, there are a few things that break more than other things. Uh, electrical supplies are probably at the top of that list. Uh, as I drive around, uh, things just rattle loose, and so I'm kind of constantly fixing electrical stuff. Um, although I've been pretty lucky lately, but uh, it's a constant thing to keep up on that. But there's also plumbing supplies that I need that I keep on hand, just little things that I can have on hand that I know might break or have been a problem in the past. Now, as far as what I have in these two big bags, well, I can give you another definitive answer on that. I don't really know. So that's what I need to figure out right now. I'm going to go through here, spread them all out, and try to figure out what I've got, what I need to save that would be helpful, and then maybe I can get uh, to a determination of what I can get rid of so that I don't have such a large amount of stuff that I'm carrying around. At one time, this was all very well organized. Uh, of course, I didn't have nearly this much but I had it somewhat separated out. So I had electrical supply stuff. Uh, I think I found some of that here. I found some zip ties. Those are always handy. This is something that I always encourage everybody to keep on hand, um, as well as some things that are a little more unusual, like aluminum tape. Uh, this stuff is more useful than you might imagine. So this is one of those things that I would recommend uh, people take a look at. Uh, at least be aware of it. And if you can find some, uh, keep it on hand because you will find that it is useful for certain things. There are some things that are still useful in here. Unfortunately, I've got some things that are just kind of junk. Um, old electrical wiring. Uh, this is not a cable that I have used for anything or would want to use for anything. So this is a pretty easy thing I can just start to put in a toss away pile. But this is probably going to take me a while because there are some things like this electrical cable here. Those are some nice clamps and I'm not sure where I got this from, uh, what it was for, but it is something that might be useful in the future. So this is what I'm going to have to just go through and decide what do I really need and what can go away? I should probably be thinking about the fact that this is eight years of stuff that I've acquired. So this may take me a little longer than today to get rid of all this stuff to get through it and decide what is important and not important. Because uh, that's a lot of time to be acquiring stuff. But I do know that I've got a lot of junk in here as well. So. Um, I'm going to just take my time and go through here. This pile is probably going to be the easier one to go through because I only really need so much electrical supply stuff. Uh, the harder one is going to be this one here. That is heavy. You know, that's another thing about this is uh, it's not just the space that this is taking up, but the weight that I'm carrying around. Uh, I don't really need to be carrying around all this stuff. Um, and there's some stuff in here that you know, that I probably really shouldn't have bought in the first place, uh, heat shrink tubing. This is really good stuff, but I don't need this much. So I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Um, probably one thing I could do is put all of these into a bag and get rid of the box. It's these little decisions that I need to make uh, just to save on space uh, because 
this is a lot of crap, really. And I think most of it really is crap. Oh, this is not a job I really want to be doing, uh, which is why I've put it off for so long. So uh, to get me in the mood to do this, I'm going to make a little coffee. And I'm hoping that a nice cup of coffee will perk me up and get me in the right frame of mind. Although, unfortunately, I'm not so sure that's going to happen because of the coffee that I have here today. So this coffee is from Trader Joe's, and I normally don't buy coffee from Trader Joe's because I don't find it to be the best price usually. Um, and the other thing is, is the quality of Trader Joe's coffee is not always the best either. Um, they do have some specials that they run from time to time. I think kind of more seasonal type coffees. And this is one that I would think I would like. Uh, it's Ethiopian coffee and Ethiopian coffee is usually always my favorite. Unfortunately, there's some clues on this that it would not be a coffee that I would like. The biggest one here is that it says the roast level is light medium. And what I've found in the past with Trader Joe's is they always uh, call their roast level a little lighter than what it actually is. So anything that they say is a light roast is definitely medium roast. Anything that's medium is definitely dark roast. Uh, and that has proved to be true with this one. See, I can open it up here and show you, couldn't I? Um, this is maybe light roast compared to uh, Starbucks or Pete's or something like that, but this is not light roast coffee. Uh, it's not even really medium roast coffee. So I'm, I'm not too happy with the coffee already as soon as I opened it up, but I thought, well, you know, it smells fine. Uh, it's not too terribly dark roasted, so maybe I'll like it anyway. Um, I've tried it and I've tried brewing it all kinds of different ways and it just doesn't have any flavor, it seems. Uh, it smells okay, uh, but you know, it's not, it's not like a freshness thing. Uh, the coffee's fresh, it's just that there's just not a whole lot going on uh, with this coffee. I think if they did it light roast, it probably would have been amazing, uh, but instead they over roasted it. Uh, which is what Trader Joe's always does. And so it leaves me with a coffee that I'm not real excited about. I guess I can turn the stove on here, start heating up my water. Um, one, one funny thing about this, somebody asked me if I uh, have tried this. And at the time that they asked me that, uh, my Trader Joe's, my local Trader Joe's here where I'm at, uh, did, didn't have any. Um, and then I think it was maybe two weeks later uh, this showed up on the shelf. So I'm not sure if every store carries it uh, or if maybe it's only sold in certain parts of the country. But um, yeah, I, I found it eventually, but I'm uh, of course sad that I found it because it's just been a huge letdown. Uh, today is super windy out, so I thought it would be a good day to do this because I don't want to be outside in the wind. But um, just looking at the sheer volume of parts that I have here, uh, <laughs> all of this stuff that I have to go through, there's just so much. It's just kind of putting me off of doing this job. Just rinse that out. Sometimes I don't wash my mug so much, but I'm putting some boiling water through it. So that's, that means it's clean enough, right? And I'll just put a little more boiling water in it to warm up the mug. Um, yeah, so looking at all of these parts, it's just a lot of stuff to go through. But then I keep remembering, it's windy out. Do you really want to be outside? Not so much. No. So I guess this is the right day to do this. So one thing that you can do if you do end up buying some of this Trader Joe's coffee is uh, just brew it a little bit longer than you normally would. Uh, so normally I try to stick to about four and a half minutes on the AeroPress. Uh, but if you take it a little bit longer, you might get a little bit more flavor out of it. Uh, this is one of those times that I wish I had some whipping cream because that would give me a little more flavor. All I've got is half and half right now, um, but I'll just add a little extra half and half. I could add some butter in this too. 
Although then people would make fun of me, but that would give it a little bit of flavor too, wouldn't it? But yeah, I think no matter what you do to this coffee, it just isn't very good. Uh, so I don't recommend buying it. Um, if you see this one at your local Trader Joe's, organic Ethiopian light medium roast, I say just skip it because uh, it is a $10 bag, which I don't think is uh, a good price for it, uh, especially because it just is lacking quite a bit of flavor. But let's see if it'll give me the boost I need to uh, continue on with my little tiny job here. This job is not so little at all. I've got a lot to go through here. <laughs> so another reason I need to be doing this is because uh, these bags are starting to rip up. So it's time to replace them. Uh, years ago, I switched to just using grocery bags. These are just those real cheap grocery bags that you get in any grocery store. I found this to be a lot easier versus a hard shell toolbox or tool case, just because I can kind of shift stuff around inside of them and be able to fit this into a corner, which that's all I have here, just odd shaped corners. And so just to make things easier, uh, when I'm going to put all this stuff away, uh, I just found it easier to use a bag instead. But the problem is that the bags start to rip out. Like this one's got a big, huge tear in it on this side, which is gonna get worse and worse very quickly. Partly because I have a lot of really heavy stuff in here, but also I've got tools in here as well. So that's uh, another reason why the bags don't last too long. But I think I have a better solution and this is it. I went to Home Depot here and bought another tool bag. Uh, this is soft sided tool bag. So it'll give me a little bit of the same flexibility that uh, the, the old bags have given me. Um, maybe not quite so much because there is kind of a rigid top to it here. Um, but I'm hoping that it'll work. Uh, I did have one of these before, but I bought it at Harbor Freight and it was basically the same, uh, but I only got about three months out of it before all of the bottom corners of it just blew out. So I decided not to go to Harbor Freight again for another one of those. I'm hoping that the Home Depot one, which is pretty much the same, uh, but it does feel a little bit better made than the uh, Harbor Freight one. Oddly, it was only about $3 more. So uh, I don't know, maybe $3 is the key to having a much better made bag that'll last more than three months. I don't know, we'll find out, but I gotta do something. Uh, the only thing is this might be a bit optimistic that I'm gonna be able to whittle all of this stuff down to fit into this bag, but that is my hope, at least to uh, get a good start on it. And if I have a lot left over, I can always just pop back into Home Depot and buy another one of these bags. Uh, they're only about 15 bucks, so not a bad price really. But I guess that means I should stop yapping and get to sorting. Or I can just keep looking at this and enjoy some coffee for a little while longer. Um, this, is just, this is just a lot of stuff to go through. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Too much stuff. So some of the things that I have here I definitely need to keep and it's just a no-brainer. Uh, other things like scrap pieces of wood, like why do I still have this hanging around? I don't know. This can go away. But other things like uh, tools. Um, this happens to be a specialty crimper. Uh, this is made for crimping Anderson connectors. This is something I found incredibly useful and I will never be without. So this is an obvious stay, even though it's, it's big and it's bulky, it's heavy. Uh, I'd never get rid of this. Um, same for any kind of other electrical supplies. Uh, a good pair of crimpers I always need to keep on hand, as well as backup wire. Now, I probably don't need this much wire, but I do have a little wiring job that I have planned, so this will come in handy and I'll use most of this wire for that wiring job. 
and then I'll have some left over for repairs uh, if need be in the future. And unfortunately, especially when it comes to electrical stuff, I found that repairs are going to happen. So another thing that would help with repairs and that every van should have is uh, a meter. So an ohm meter, volt meter, whatever you want to call it. You don't really need to know how to use this thing as long as you have uh, YouTube. You can go on YouTube and find a little tutorial that'll teach you how to use this. But if you don't have it, then you're kind of stuck. So you should always have things like that. Um, another thing I keep on hand is uh, some propane parts. Now I have hoses and things too, but uh, the regulator is something that fails all the time. I've had regulators last just a couple of weeks. So definitely something that I want to keep on hand just in case I need it because uh, you never really know when they're going to go bad. So there are a few things here that I don't really need to think about. Uh, there are some things though that are kind of on the edge uh, like this. I have a little fan that has been useful in the past and I have it hooked up here to this little uh, voltage regulator so that gives me the ability to run this fan uh, at an infinite number of speeds, which is pretty nice. If I need to just pull a little bit of air, I can do that. Um, this though has been really problematic and uh, I should probably toss this one out and buy a new one if I really am honest because this thing has just not been reliable at all. Uh, I normally don't like to, to keep around um, voltage regulators like this because they are notoriously poor quality. So it's one of the reasons I don't have one of these on my lighting is because they just don't seem to last unless you buy a really expensive one. That's really not something that I want to do. So this is something that I'll probably keep just because I don't want to have to buy a new one. But is it really something that I'm going to use? Well, you know, it's kind of, I'm kind of on the fence on that. Now, other things that I'm not on the fence on are things like screws. Uh, these Deckmate screws are fantastic. The quality of them is really good uh, if you're going to build anything. So I keep these around for building things or repairing things, uh, as well as these uh, Spax screws. These things are great too. Uh, two really good brands of screws to keep around if you need to do some repairs on things. So that should give you an idea of the parts that I have to sift through here and to decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to get rid of. Uh, lots of junk in here, obviously, but there are things that I don't really want to get rid of just because I don't want to have to buy something in the future to replace it. So that's the hard part of all this. So um, I doubt I'm going to get all of this done, but as long as I get a little progress going today, I'll be happy. Hey, and many hours later, I think I'm done, mostly because I'm out of coffee. So this is a good time to say that the project is finished. So technically, I still have two bags here, uh, but I threw out a lot of stuff, and I mean a lot of stuff. Um, I would probably sift through a little more of this bag, because this bag's a little tubby. Uh, ooh, and heavy, too. Um, in fact, I might... I was going to throw away this other bag, but I might just double bag this one because uh, it's it's looking like the seams are ready to burst there. So I'll double bag that one with this one uh, just in case. But um, there's only so much I can throw away here. I only bought, you know, one thing at Home Depot. I just bought this $15 bag. So I think that uh, doesn't give me license to just fill up their trash can. So I'm going to gonna maybe go through this again in the future, but I'm a lot more organized now. I uh, found a bunch of things I didn't know I had that I just forgot about. And basically what I did is I separated stuff off. If I have a project, I should find what I need out of the new tool bag. So that's what I hope I've accomplished here. So in the new bag, I've got uh, my meter, my all my tape and uh, zip ties, uh, electrical tape, Teflon tape, and some of the hand tools that I constantly uh, need. So that'll make it easy for me just to grab this and go. Uh, I've also got electrical connectors uh, in that little bag because that is one of the biggest things that I have to keep repairing. And that's just uh, a thing that I found 
uh, throughout the years is because I'm in a moving vehicle, things just rattle loose. Uh, I have gotten better about repairing them and having them last longer. Uh, one of the issues I had originally was I bought all the connectors uh, that I have here, like um, like these little connectors, things like that. I Originally, I bought all of those at Walmart, and every single one of those Walmart connectors failed within a year. Uh, most of them failed within six months, but I had a few that lasted a little bit longer. So I, uh, I always try to buy better quality connectors now. That has been kind of a headache uh, having to deal with that. But I think at this point now everything has been switched over to better quality connectors. But I still have the odd connector that just because I'm in a moving vehicle, it rattles around. And even though I'm not driving a whole lot, uh, just that rattling just rattles things loose a little bit. So I think this is a much better uh, way to go here. And I definitely have some more paring down to do. But you know, this is a this is a good start. Okay, so I'm trying to get things organized. The top of my bed looks a little messy because I'm moving some stuff around my underbed storage. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. I've got the bag of parts on top of the new bag and they're stacked really nicely and pushed way back up against the back wall. That gives me the most amount of space here. And I keep the tools and things back there because I don't need to access them every day, so it's the best spot for them for me. At least I hope I don't have to access them every day. So I'm quite happy with how this is going, and it's probably time to get a snack. Now, I do feel bad about speaking ill of Trader Joe's earlier with their coffee. Uh, that particular coffee I just don't really like. Uh, if you like dark roast coffee, I think Trader Joe's is a fine place to get coffee, but just I don't like dark roast coffee, and so it's not the best place to get coffee for me. Uh, doesn't mean that I have a lack of respect for the store, and in fact, if I'm around to Trader Joe's, I'm going to buy stuff there uh, as much as I possibly can, because they do have some really good deals there. Uh, and snack-wise, because that's what I need right now, uh, their ice cream is very good. Uh, I had mint chocolate chip last time, and I didn't really intend to buy any more ice cream the other day when I stopped in, but I couldn't help myself. It's such a good deal, and it's such good quality ice cream that I figured might as well just treat myself to a little ice cream. I did buy what I went in to get, though, which is uh, corn tortillas, and I'm almost out of them, actually, because these are my favorite corn tortillas, again, from Trader Joe's, a store I like to shop at that does have good things. Just um, if you like light roast coffee, not the place to go, but lots of other great things there at Trader Joe's. Oh, maybe I'll put the kettle back on and make another cup of coffee because coffee goes really good with ice cream. Just not coffee ice cream. I don't want any of that. As soon as you put sweetener in coffee, it just ruins it for me. So that carries over into coffee ice cream as well for me. I just don't enjoy it quite so much. I want to like it. I just don't like it all that much because it's sweet. Now, if somebody made an unsweetened coffee ice cream, I'd probably be all over that. But I doubt that that's ever going to be a thing, is it? Uh, maybe coffee ice. Is that a thing? I'm not sure. Anyway, now I'm rambling. I do have some coffee that is different from the Trader Joe's coffee there. Uh, and oddly, it tastes much better. I say oddly because it's decaf. Uh, this is some local to Sonoma County decaf. Uh, Taylor Lane is the company. Um, I've tried a couple of their coffees and everything that I've tried has been fantastic, uh, but the decaf is probably one of the best decafs I've ever had. And in fact, it's so good, it tastes much better than that supposedly great Trader Joe's coffee there behind me. That'll just stay over there. I'm going to make a cup of this because this is much more satisfying than that Trader Joe's coffee. Such a bummer. One thing that I've been doing lately that I think really helps quite a bit is I stir my coffee in the AeroPress uh, just a little bit more. Um, I think that extra agitation helps out quite a bit. Uh, although I think if you look at the packaging that comes with the AeroPress, it will tell you that you don't need to stir it or anything. 
uh, which I disagree with. And I think it just depends on the coffee that you're that you're brewing in it. Um, another thing that I disagree with with AeroPress uh, is I think they say to use about a two or two and a half minute brew time. And that I just don't find to be long enough. So especially if I have a coffee that seems like it's a little lacking in flavor, like that Trader Joe's coffee that I had earlier, I'll brew a little bit longer. So I think I mentioned that before. Now with this coffee, this one's really good. I just keep to about four and a half minutes. So I set a timer, try to keep to about four and a half minutes. But the interesting thing about the AeroPress is if you go a minute or so beyond that, there's not really going to be a big difference in flavor, I don't think. Uh, sometimes it'll improve the flavor if you've got a coffee that's kind of lacking in quality. Uh, but I think with a good quality coffee, uh, you can let it go kind of what I consider to be overbrewed. Anything after four and a half minutes, I would consider to be overbrewed. Uh, and that would usually lead to some bitter flavors. But if you do it in the AeroPress, it doesn't seem to matter so much. So that's one of the things that I do for uh, kind of poor quality coffee. I'll just brew it a little bit longer, let it sit in the AeroPress a little bit longer before I press it through. Uh, but with all of the coffees that I do now, I just stir a little bit longer. Uh, and I, I just use a chopstick for that, but I just stir just, just a little bit. Uh, sometimes I might stir even up to 45 seconds uh, if it's a real poor quality coffee. Just give it a real good stir in that hot water and it seems to help improve the flavor a little bit. Boy, the crazy thing about this is that this tastes so much better. This decaf coffee tastes so much better than that premium coffee that I had earlier, uh, supposedly premium coffee I had earlier. Uh, it just goes to show you that the quality of the beans really makes a difference. So if you have really good quality beans, it doesn't really matter if they're decaf or not. It can still be a really good cup. And this cup is much better tasting than that other one. It's just kind of crazy to me. Well, I'm going to start to wind down here for my day. Uh, still plenty of daylight out, but I'm hoping to get out and do a bit of a walkabout. I've been in the van quite a bit. It does sound like the wind has died down. Uh, maybe I've not been paying attention because I've been focused on trying to get my junk whittled away, but um, I think the wind has died down, so that means I can get out and enjoy myself outside a little bit. Uh, it's not every day that I show all the junk that I have, but like most people, I have a junk drawer. I mean, it's a junk bag at this point. Well, two junk bags at this point, but uh, I'm like everybody else. I have to keep some things on hand. I think it's prudent to keep things on hand just so you can repair stuff easily. Uh, but also, I just don't like to have to buy stuff unless uh, I really need to. So uh, I tried not to throw out things that I thought I could use in the future. But who knows? There may be some things that I miss going forward. But um, there were a bunch of things that I forgot that I had. So you never know. I mean, I guess it goes both ways there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get out and about. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.